I'm Professor Ananya Chowdhury and I work in Manchester both at the University and also at the Christie NHS Foundation Trust. This um, lecture covers the evidence behind um, whether we should be trying to combine um, systemic immunotherapy in the form of immune checkpoint inhibitors with radiotherapy when treating muscle invasive bladder cancer with radical intent. Um, also, the results that are currently published or have been presented in the past two or three years and gives, I think, um, an idea about whether um, there is a future for this form of treatment for muscle invasive bladder cancer. Um, there is a huge amount of evidence showing that outcomes um, for patients with um, localised muscle invasive bladder cancer that is potentially curable um, are the same whether patients undergo surgery or have radiotherapy with a radiosensitizer. And certainly in the last few years, the important international guidelines have agreed that there is um, that there are comparable outcomes and that there should be equipoise when um, explaining to patients the treatment options so that patients can make the right treatment, the right decisions for them. So it's not about surgery not being the gold standard anymore. It's about there being two gold standards, either radical surgery or radical radiotherapy with a radio sensitizer, depending on patient preference and what the patient chooses to be the best treatment for them. Uh, to date, the, there are two published studies which I outline in the talk. Um, both those studies were phase one studies, um, combining um, in one instance radiotherapy alone with an immune checkpoint inhibitor with a once a week high dose radiotherapy protocol um, over six weeks. And the other study combining a four week protocol with radiotherapy every day, Monday to Friday, um, with immune checkpoint inhibitors, both those studies. Um, and both those studies were stopped early because of unacceptable toxicity and therefore those protocols will not be taken forward to later clinical studies to even see whether there can be patient benefit. As we would um, expect, if there's too much toxicity with the protocol, then that protocol cannot be um, investigated any further. This suggests that we need to be cautious when we're combining immunotherapy with radiotherapy, um, as toxicity can be a problem. Does it mean that we should never combine um, immunotherapy with radiotherapy? Well, there have been um, a couple of studies presented this year at major conferences, which um, I uh, review in the lecture, which suggest that there is increased toxicity with the um, combination treatment, but that this toxicity is manageable. So I think what this tells us is that it, there is clear, it is clearly important to have the right radiotherapy protocol when exploring the combination with immune checkpoint inhibitors. And that when we come to do a phase three study to see if there is a benefit, that um, we should be aware that there are marginal gains to be had because toxicity may be higher but the actual response to the treatment may not be hugely better than radiotherapy with a radiosensitizer. Um, data published this year from the UK um, has shown convincingly, in my opinion, that the optimal dose and fractionation of radiotherapy when combined with a radiosensitizer for bladder preservation is a moderately hypofractionated protocol. 
The protocol that um, we would recommend is 55 gray in 20 fractions over four weeks with treatments daily Monday to Friday, but not at the weekends. This means that we give a dose of 2.75 gray per fraction, which um, is higher than many colleagues have given in the past where they gave two gray per fraction. But the meta-analysis from the BCON and BC2001 studies um, shows beyond a doubt that not only is the four-week protocol non-inferior to a six-and-a-half-week protocol, it is actually superior when looking at local regional control, which is the most which is the main endpoint, actually, from both the BCON and BC2001 studies. 